Hello there. Well, thanks for joining us. Today, we'll be creating this mandarin duck. This is a Drake mandarin duck and is considered by many the most spectacular of all ducks due to its amazing coloring and beautiful head shape. This painting is in oils, but the underpainting is created in acrylic to speed up the project. And this can be done in a couple of painting sessions. So let's get into it. For this project, we'll be using a 60 by 50 centimeter canvas, an acrylic brush set, a palette knife, a tear off paper palette, a satin acrylic intro set, an oil paint intro set, and a tube of cerise in acrylic color. This color is created from pigment PR122 and I couldn't mix this tone from the paints in the sets and it's a pretty important color for the project. We'll also be using a 6B and HB pencil to transfer our image. So first we need to transfer the image of our duck onto the canvas. We have provided this outline as well as a photo of the finished piece that can be used for color reference. Both of these can be found on our web page. We begin by shading the backside of the outline printout with a 6B pencil and flip it over shaded side down. As I lay this down, I think about the composition. In this case, I place the duck to the right and raise him up slightly. The composition would be a lot less effective than if I just plonked him in the middle of the canvas. Once I'm happy with the position, I tape it into position and retrace the outline if you like, you can redefine the drawing and add any extra detail. The first step of the painting is to create the background underpainting. As mentioned, the underpainting is created with satin acrylic, so squeeze out some lemon yellow, medium green, scarlet and black. To apply the paint, we drag a one inch flat brush across the colors and mix the colors on the canvas. We want various dark tones sporadically across the canvas. Keep the brush moving quickly and work across the canvas. You really need to work fast with acrylics due to the rate that they dry at. If the color becomes too dark, dip the brush into lemon yellow and mix that into the color to lighten the tone. The coat will be patchy and inconsistent, but that is what we want. We'll be adding a top layer in oils, but we want that under layer to vary in strength. When you mix on the canvas, you get lots of variation, which adds more interest than a flat layer does. Cut in around our duck, but don't be too worried about running paint over the lines into the duck, because we'll be adding the underpainting to the duck in the next step. When creating an underlayer or underpainting, the tones should usually be darker than the tones going over the top on the top layer. So try to follow the light over dark approach. To undercoat the duck, squeeze out every color in the satin acrylic intro set, except the purple and medium green, and squeeze out some of that cerise. We then refer to the finished color printout and lay the colors into the duck. We laid the colors out in this order. Black into the head area, the chest, the markings on the body, the top part of the body and the tail feathers. Then lay black into the reflection in the water. Obviously, the reflection is essentially the duck but upside down. The thing to bear in mind when creating reflections is that it is diffused. This means that due to the rippled surface of the water, the tones will undulate and have a wavy look to them. Acrylic paint straight out of the tube is too thick to flow smoothly. So for the black, a little water can be added to the paint to increase the flowability. Next, we can add some phthalo blue into the forehead, chest, and the tail area. Lay this tone into the appropriate areas of reflection also. Mm -hmm. 
That beautiful cerise tone can be painted into the top of the chest next. And the cheek feather area can be painted in with scarlet. Add some red into the beak and then lemon yellow around the eye. Mandarin ducks wing feathers curl up and stand proud from their bodies like sails. These can be blocked in with orange. We can then add the white around the eye and up the head, the base of the chest, the markings on the wings and the tail area. There is also a fair bit of white in the reflection. While you're here, take a look around the Create section on our website and uncover a whole heap of free stuff from free projects, handy tips and tricks and techniques to keep you busy. The underpainting stage of our painting is now finished and we can add the top coat in oil paint, starting with the background. So squeeze out some lemon yellow, orange yellow, brilliant red, emerald green and lamp black. From here we create a rich reddish brown undertone from lemon yellow, orange, brilliant red and a touch of lamp black. Be careful not to use too much black as you can destroy a colour, so just add it slowly. If it's too dark, add more yellow and more red if it's not warm enough. Use a touch of this brown tone and mix it with some yellow and a touch of green to create a sort of yellow ochre. We then create a warm yellow from lemon yellow with a touch of brilliant red. We now have our reddish brown, an ochre, the orange, warm yellow and the lemon yellow to create our glowing water surface. The dominant tone of our water will be yellows with orange tints. Because yellow is the weakest tone, we need to lay this down first. So charge the one inch brush with lemon yellow and lay this color in with large horizontal strokes. We will be adding the darker tones in between this color, but it's easier to darken a tone than have to go back and try and lighten it. When adding a new colour, just wipe the first colour off the brush. Apply the colour with the brush on its side and keep the applications of colour thin. Once the yellow is over most of the canvas, lay the warmer yellow colour in between these bands. Then add the ochre tone and then the brown colour, albeit more sparsely. Wash the one inch brush up, dry it and lightly blend the tones together with the clean brush. For best results, hold the brush very lightly and only use the tip of the bristles. After working the surface of the canvas, you will notice that the colours smoothly transition into each other. There will be some colour contamination where the lightest tones will become slightly darker, which of course is unavoidable. But more of the light tone can be blended into these areas with a clean flat brush. It may not be apparent, but different tones are how the reflection of light works on the surface. Reflections happen when light bounces off the surface. The light from the light source is referred to as incident rays. And the reflected image we see are the reflected rays. On a perfectly flat surface, like a mirror, the reflected ray bounces off the surface at the same angle as the incident ray, resulting in an undistorted image or consistent colour. Our surface here has ripples however, so these ripples cause the reflected rays to bounce off in all directions, causing tonal distortion. Darker in the bottom of the gully of the ripple and lighter at the apex of each ripple. If this water was flat, like a sheet of glass, it would be a single tone. 
continually keep standing back and looking at your work. Are there any bits that jump out at you and look jarring or wrong? If so, lighten or darken as needed. Once we are happy with the water, we can top coat our duck. With the top coating, the colours are applied to the underpainting and can be seen to an extent in parts. Squeeze all of the colours out onto the palette. The beak is painted with red and highlights with some white mixed with the red. Create a mix of phthalo blue with a touch of titanium white and lay a light coat over the blue of the forehead and chest. We can then overpaint the head with brilliant red and lemon yellow. The feathers on the duck are quite detailed. A yellow can be created from titanium white and lemon yellow, and thin strokes can be created with the linear brush, starting from the bottom up. Paint the orange wingtips and black tail feathers. The wing is painted with a white to yellow to orange blend. Add this tone into the reflected area too. Then I scratch back the paint to create fine lines with a pointed modelling tool. A sharp pencil would work for this as well. Apply more of the blue mix into the chest in small touches to suggest soft plumage. Paint this tone into the wind feathers and the appropriate areas in the reflection. Refer to the finished printout and lay in any detail. And voila! We hope you've enjoyed this fun lesson and thanks for watching and hope you've picked up something you can use with your art. 
have fun creating and we'll see you in the next one.